This presentation will demonstrate the surgical technique for the fixation of a zygomatico maxillary fracture using a 1.3 adaption plate and a 1.5 L plate. It will also show how an orbital floor fracture is repaired with an orbital floor mesh plate. The objectives of the exercise are to understand the correct anatomical reduction to reproduce the original structure of the zygomatico maxillary complex and the orbital walls, and the importance of restoring normal orbital volume. For zygomatico maxillary complex and orbital floor fractures, preoperative CT scans in axial and coronal cuts are standard. Additional sagittal cuts are often helpful. Radiographs may also be used in certain circumstances. The instruments needed are the plate cutters, the cutter for mesh plates, two bending pliers, for 1.3 mm screws, the 1 mm drill bit with 6 mm stop and the 1.3 screwdriver shaft with holding sleeve and handle. For 1.5 mm screws, the 1.1 mm drill bit with 6 mm stop and the 1.5 screwdriver shaft with holding sleeve and handle. Gloves are recommended in this exercise to reduce the risk of allergic reactions. Zygomatico maxillary complex and orbital floor fractures can be reached through either a lower eyelid or a transconjunctival incision and an upper eyelid incision. The fractures are exposed before reduction and fixation. The fracture located at the lateral buttress of the zygoma can commonly be reached through an intraoral upper sulcus incision. In this model, the reduction of the zygomatico maxillary complex fracture is begun by inserting a manipulating screw in the zygoma. The 1.1 mm drill bit with 6 mm stop is used in a position that allows optimal bone manipulation but does not interfere with later plating. A 1.5 mm cortex screw is inserted using the 1.5 screwdriver with holding sleeve but it is not fully inserted down to the bone. The screw is held with the forceps and the bone fragment is manipulated until it's reduced. The reduction must also be checked at the zygomatico frontal suture and the lateral orbital wall. It's important to confirm that there's no step off between the greater wing of the sphenoid and the zygoma. A 1.3 curved orbital plate is selected to stabilize the fracture in this area. The plate cutter is used to trim the plate to the required length. The five hole plate is contoured so that it fits to the anatomical features of the frontozygomatic buttress. It is held in place with the plate holding forceps. The first hole is drilled next to the fracture line using a one millimeter drill bit with six millimeter stop. A six millimeter long 1.3 millimeter cortex screw is inserted using the 1.3 screwdriver with holding sleeve but the screw is not fully tightened so that the plate can still be manipulated. Another screw is placed on the opposite side of the fracture line. Both screws are fully tightened. Two more screws are inserted one on each side of the fracture line. The central hole which lies over the fracture line is not used. 
The next step is the repair of the fracture located at the zygomatico maxillary buttress. A short 1.5 L plate is contoured with the bending pliers to correspond to the anatomical features. The plate is positioned on the thick bone of the buttress, taking care to avoid the tooth roots. The first hole is drilled next to the fracture line with the 1.1 mm drill bit with 6 mm stop. A 6 mm long, 1.5 mm cortex screw is inserted. Another screw is put in on the opposite side of the fracture line. Two more screws are inserted, one on each side of the fracture line. The manipulation screw is removed. The orbital floor defect is exposed by using an orbital retractor to pull back the globe. A 1.3 orbital floor mesh plate is selected to repair the orbital floor defect. The radial design fits the conical shape of the orbit. Using the mesh cutter, the plate is trimmed to the correct anatomical size. It's important to use a large enough plate to span the entire defect. There have to be sufficient screw holes to secure fixation to the infraorbital rim. All sharp edges of the plate are trimmed off to protect the soft tissues. The plate is contoured to meet the anatomical features of the orbital floor and rim. Proper contouring is crucial to restore the normal orbital volume. When inserting the plate, the soft tissues must be properly retracted to avoid entrapment. The first hole is drilled into the infraorbital rim using a 1 mm drill bit with 6 mm stop. A 6 mm long 1.3 mm screw is inserted using a 1.3 screwdriver with holding sleeve. Additional screws are inserted until the orbital floor mesh plate is securely fixed in place. Restored orbital volume and shape are a requirement for a normal globe position. In a clinical case, particular care has to be taken to restore the medial posterior wall. The post-operative CT shows the position of an orbital floor plate after reconstruction of the medial caudal wall in the coronal and 3D view. This exercise has shown the correct anatomical reduction to achieve the original structure of the zygomatical maxillary complex and orbital walls, as well as the importance of restoring normal orbital volume. Here are the main steps once again. Reduction of the zygoma with the help of the manipulation screw. Fixation of the frontozygomatic suture with a 1.3 adaption plate. Fixation of the zygomatical maxillary buttress with a 1.5 L plate. Trimming and contouring of the 1.3 orbital floor plate. And fixation of the plate with 1.3 millimeter screws. A 1.3 mesh also could be selected to fix the orbital floor defect. The mesh is trimmed and contoured to meet the proper anatomical features. Enough screw holes should remain on the plate for proper fixation to the infraorbital rim. In cases of severe dislocation, multifragmentation and instability, a four-point fixation with additional plates at the zygomatic arch and infraorbital rim 
may be indicated.